Hey everyone, it's Will and I'm in my backyard, which is this place that a lot of people like to spend time in their backyards in the summertime. And around this time in July, we start to see Japanese beetles in, impacting our beautiful containers or like my pallet garden here. You can see we've got this basil, which had been doing great right up until a few days ago where we start to see damage from the Japanese beetle. And if you've had them before, you know that they're very selective feeders because they'll eat almost anything, but they don't like to eat the veins. So that's where you'll see them kind of leave behind these veins like this. And if you're seeing that, then that means that you have these guys. You'll also not miss them because they're very uh, large relatively and they have this iconic coppery body with the green head. And if we have those in our yard, we want to make sure that we're getting some good control because they can devastate our planters. Um, in Ontario, there's not a lot of options that we have for a spray, but the two most common ones that people will use are Endol and the Traps. And Endol is a combination of insecticidal soap plus pyrethrum, which is an extract from a daisy. It's really pretty. It's been used for thousands of years. And putting those two together does give you some control if you're spraying those on there and it's totally safe. The more popular one is these uh, traps. And now the trap is basically uh, a bag, a uh, deflector shield, a lure. That's about it. It's really simple and effective, but if you use it right, it will be helpful for you. And I want to show you guys how to actually set these up because you might've seen the boxes in there, but if you haven't done it before, it can be a little bit complicated. So inside of your box, you're going to have, as I said, you're going to have your lure. You're going to have your bags. It's going to come with two. And then you have your deflector shield, which is this guy here, which is basically just uh, a little X. So the first thing we can do with this is you can take this and slide it together like this and you'll make your little X. And you'll see that you have, um, you'll have either uh, the holes at the top, which is for mounting, and then you have these side pieces here, which is for hanging the bags off of. So what we're going to do once we have our X is we're going to take our little uh, pheromone and we're going to peel this guy back. And with this one, this is basically a pheromone. So it's a lure. It'll basically bring all of the boys to the yard or girls and uh, whatever. They'll be attracted to the scent that comes out of here. And it's basically going to bring them all to your yard, which is going to be highly effective. But to a point, it's like if you go to a state fair and you have a garbage bale, it's great if you need to dispose of some trash. But if the garbage pail is already full, then it's going to be really difficult to actually just deposit your trash. So that's where we have our bags here because all of the Japanese beetles are going to fly to that trap and they're really lazy, lousy flyers. So they're going to fall into that and then they'll fall down because they're not very good flyers. So then we'll put this bag at the bottom of this deflector shield and we'll be able to collect them in there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to attach this bag on each of the four corners of our shield can be a little bit awkward the first time but when you put that on there it's going to help to ca uh, capture all of the Japanese beetles that do fly in to your yard and I was mentioning before that these are highly effective but you have to stay on top of them because if you have say a hundred Japanese beetle in your yard you might have seen a few you put out one of these traps and you will find a whole bunch and you'll collect all kinds because they are winged flyers so they will fly from other parts of the yard and other yards in your neighborhood to get right to your pheromone trap. So it's important that once we set this up, that we actually stay on top of it and that we are emptying out the bag when we need to. Now you can go in and you can just take this bag off and you can dispose of that uh, in the trash, but a lot of people find it awkward to be dealing with an entire bag full, all of this all the way full with all these Japanese beetles. So if you want, there is that second bag that's in there. And when you come into a garden center like humans, you'll see that there's usually these two other products. This one here is just a replacement bait, which is this guy here, because after about a month, it'll start to wear away. So you can replace that. And then the bags that are here are just to refill this. And I, I know it might sound gross or seem gross, but you will actually collect a ton, a ton of them in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the tree that's back here, because one of the most important things when we actually set up these traps is that we're not setting them up so that we're attracting them right to the pallet or right to the planter that you are trying to protect. Because if you have roses or cannas or raspberries or any other number of things that these Japanese beetles really, really love, the last thing we wanna do is put the, the trap right beside the thing that they're loving because then they can fly in there and then if the bag is full, they're gonna land right in the plant. So they really want it to be there. And this is so effective that you can actually put it way away from any of the other plants that are in your garden. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hang it in this tree. We can see that there's not a lot of other things that I am looking to protect around there. 
Uh, there is some of this Virginia creeper that's back here, but I'm okay with sacrificing that. The Japanese beetles do love, 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 love them. Some Virginia creeper. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that wire that wrapped around the bag and I'm gonna put it in those two holes that are right at the top here. And I'm just gonna hang it in my tree. Now I'm gonna put it up a little bit higher so it's on this knot so it doesn't slip down. And there you go. And so throughout the day, you'll find that Japanese beetles will fly to this one. It's early morning when I'm shooting this video right now and Japanese beetles are pretty lousy flyers in the morning. They're kind of like drunk people. They're just a little bit drowsy and a little bit awkward, but later on in the day, they're gonna fly in like crazy into this one, fly in, deflect onto this, fall down into this bag, and then you can come and check on it and you'll see that there's a large bulge in this bag. And that's when you know that it's time to change them out. Again, you could give this to your neighbors or you could put it at further edges of the yard, but it does attract a lot of them and I really do like my neighbors here. So I'm gonna keep it in my yard, but I'm gonna put it in this spot that's far away from all the other gardens in the area. And that's how we set up and use these Japanese beetle traps effectively. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you can post them in the comment section below. Otherwise, if you guys are setting up the traps, good luck and happy hunting on all those Japanese beetles that you'll find in your yard this summer.